Okay. Well, yeah. Um, I can appreciate that we are nonpartisan on the city council, but this question needs to be answered. And I think we hear a lot of spin from a lot of candidates because they want to avoid saying how they truly feel. And I can tell you, I truly am disappointed in our county government. I feel like there's lack of transparency. I feel that there is a, a sense of retaliation over the last election. And that's why Gibbs was appointed as a county administrator. They did that without interviewing any other administrators or looking at any other people to fill that position. They just came in the first meeting, bam, made changes. The, the, um, as far as dissolving the equality and inclusion department, why? Why? What sense does that make? We don't want equality and inclusion in our county government. I mean, in overlooking our employees and our, and our management and our hiring practices. I mean, that makes no sense. Why do that? That was just cruel. And another thing, the, the, the health department. You know, I believe it was about 10 years ago that the citizens of this community put a $10 million millage into the health department and the mental health in this county. And all that is gonna to go to waste now. All those programs are created, all the good it did, are all gonna be washed away because of this new budget on the health department and this attack on the health uh, administrator. So I think we really need to examine both sides. I mean, I understand why people are angry out there. I understand they feel they didn't have a voice through this whole epidemic issue. And I understand that they were forced to do things they didn't free, feel free and willing to do, like their freedoms were taken away. But the way that they're handling this in the county level is not right. They, there's better ways. We need peace and we need kindness. And that's how we should rule. That's all. All right, I think it's Richard. Did you, please, did you start the last question? Okay. Sorry, my, num my numbering system messed up, <laughs> sorry. Question number eight, back to Ferrysburg. Uh, so Richard, give us the microphone. Um, what is your most pressing concern about the city of Ferrysburg's current financial outlook? Well, the city of Ferrysburg, we, uh, we're financially healthy. We have been for the six years I've been on council and certainly before that. And uh, we are extremely fortunate that we have got a city manager who's got a very good sharp pencil that watches things like a hawk. And we're, we are blessed. Uh, our neighboring communities know what a gem we've got uh, in Craig Bessinger. Um, there are, because of the fact that we've got the lowest property taxes in, in the city, there are uh, things that we certainly need to get done that we just don't have adequate funding for. And there's some things that we've cut back on, like the, the uh, fall leaf pickup, we've cut back that to once, once a year, and the spring trash pickup and that type of thing, and there's only so much cutting we can do. Um, that's, that's the biggest thing, is we don't need to raise taxes, but we're probably gonna have to do something when it comes to road infrastructure and then the uh, bridge funding and coming up with a workable solution as to how we're gonna solve this bridge problem. Um, the way that I can see a path forward is having a task force for the bridge rather than having one individual uh, spearheading uh, the bridge and making multiple trips to Lansing to try to chase money, have a consortium of citizens and politicians get together develop the relationships uh, with state government and federal government. It's going to be a long-term project in order for us to get this funded. It's not, it's not uh, insurmountable, but um, that's what I'd like to see happen. Uh, yeah, my most pressing concerns, of course, Miss Bridge is uh, numero uno on there, but there are a few other things that we need to keep our eye on. Um, pensions for city employees is one of them. Um, we've uh, been on top of our pension deficit, and we've been doing a good job of it, but um, with uh, aging employees, uh, more and more people are going to start to retire, and it's something that we really need to
keep a, uh, keep an eye on and uh, make sure it doesn't get too far out of reach to where you know we really need to start making some crucial decisions as far as um, how do we resume or get, our, uh, get those revenues to pay that. Uh, Smith's Bridge, you know, like uh, Rich was saying, we definitely need a task force to put pressure on the state and federal government um, to help fund the bridge. It will be an, a, a burden on the taxpayers that I don't think we can handle. And I think uh, the bridge could really start uh, some issues with the city, you know, with one side of the city wanting funding and the other side not wanting funding for the bridge. I think it could really divide the city if we don't find funding. I think it's crucial to find the funding. Uh, the federal government has a federal uh, bridge bundling program right now, and I hope that we can reach out to them and explore that avenue as well and, uh, and, uh, and find the funding for it. But um, it is a, a crucial issue. Yeah, so uh, Jerry and Rich have done a great job pointing out um, our struggles, specifically, you know, with pensions, with the bridge, and so on. I'm not going to get into the bridge because I know that's our next question. Um, but, yeah, we have the, the lowest taxes in the Tri-Cities. I think that's great. We also have uh, amazing amenities and services. Um, that our city provides, so so that's good as well. One thing we've been discussing lately as a council that I think uh, needs additional additional conversation is not only being appealing to our residents, but being appealing to our employees. We do have a good pension, but um, you know we need to continue looking at what we pay our employees and making sure that we we are competitive with neighboring communities. There's so many um, employees that are just irreplaceable to our city. Just fantastic department heads. Craig is, uh, if you've ever worked with him, you know he's amazing. Uh, he keeps us on track with our budget, as well as everything else within the city. Um, we don't want to lose these people, um, so we need to start increasing what our compensation looks like to be competitive in a market that, over the past several years with inflation and everything else in our country, the salaries have gone through the roof, and um, we need to, to keep that up in order to be competitive. Um, and we're looking at that, we continue to. Uh, same with our fire department. We need to be able to attract quality firefighters uh, to our volunteer fire department. Um, and that may mean paying them more, um, compensating them better. Um, so just a, a, a couple things, but overall, I think the season is a great uh, financial spot. Um, and I, I look forward to discussing the bridge. All right, well, as you alluded to, our next question does regard to the bridge. So some people touched on this already, but with the news that the expected federal funding federal funding to replace Smith's Bridge has been lost, how do you think the city should proceed in attempting to procure new funding? Is it me? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, like I touched on before, um, the bridge is a crucial issue. We need to create a bridge coalition task force on council to reach out to federal and state governments. And it's crucial that we have the right leadership and the right experienced leaders in place to do that. We need leaderships with connections in Lansing. We need leaderships with connections in Washington. And I think that I bring that to the table and I hope to be part of that coalition task force. I um, have plenty of time to spend on this and I wanna make it my pet project to ensure that Smith's Bridge funding is taken care of, not by the taxpayers, but by the federal government like they promised us to begin with. Yeah, so I, I, I think it's just, it was very disheartening to see the funding for Smith's Bridge pulled. Um, but, uh, we at least got the engineering design covered, uh, from what I understand, which is great. That's just a little less money that we're going to have to fork out in the long run. Um, hopefully, we fork out nothing. Um, I, I would love, like uh, Jerry said, to find state and federal funding to pay for this, whether it be through the state and federal funding or grants. I, I really think. Um, we're in a unique situation with such a small community owning such an expensive bridge, and we're probably going to have to get creative on how we come up with the funding for it. 
Um, I, I think having that task force that Jerry alluded to is a fantastic idea. We, we cannot count on one individual to go to Washington or go to Mich uh, 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 Lansing um, to fight on our behalf. We, this really needs to be a team effort to capitalize on all of their expertise, all of their connections, um, and come together as a community to show the state and the federal government that we want this and we we need it to be paid for. So um, I, I'm not a, a fan of raising taxes to do it. Um, we were promised money and um, we need to come together as a team and come together as a community uh, to find a new solution. I mean, things happen and, and we need to, to pivot and reassess and, and get to the bottom of it. When I think of Smith's Bridge, I think of um, how uh, US 131 has been developed heading north and south, let's say from Grand Rapids. I'm six, I just turned 62 last week, hard to believe. Anyway, um, when I was a kid, of course, the expressway stopped Sand Lake, Howard City, and then it slowly was progressing further and further north up towards my hometown of Batoski. And now, of course, it's all the way up north of Cadillac. That was accomplished by the US 131 Association lobbying for 20 and 30 years to try to get funding through MDOT and through the federal government to get that expressway so that we could have more economic development up north. That may be a solution that we need to pursue here with our local governmental body, whether it be um, Ottawa County or with Muskegon County and, and working with our legislatures to bring, to bring the issue to bear. We talked about in the prior uh, questions about the Blueberry Field development in Spring Lake Township. Do you think that's going to have any traffic that's going to be going across Smith's Bridge? Hmm. Yes, it is. <laughs> okay. And, and, as well as uh, water runoff into, into Spring Lake where those people aren't going to be funding um, the lime that they're, all, the, all the Spring Lake people are getting assessed for, but all that runoff is going to be coming uh, off of their lawns into the lake. And so there, it's, a, it's going to be, a, we're going to have to sell this as a regional problem that's looking for a regional solution, and I do think a task force is the way to best solve it. All right, I believe we're down to William for our final question. We've been asking a lot of questions. Now this one gets kind of lobbed into your court. Please tell us one issue or concern that has not yet been addressed and share with us why it's important to you. So I, I guess something passionate for me um, that I would like to see continue to improve um, while we've made small strides over the past several years we have a long way to go, is our, our government transparency and communication with our citizens. So it was a great start uh, live streaming um, the council meetings. Uh, we had great intentions <laughs> with this new sound system. If any of you have watched um, our recent council meetings, you know that this new sound system we purchased has been a disaster. Um, but we've gone back to the, we've been working with our city attorney going back to this vendor uh, to have it removed, have it replaced. Um, it's crucial that um, our residents know what we're doing, not only to um, be in the know of what's happening in their community, but to hold all of us accountable as well, uh, if it comes down to that. Um, another piece is increasing our online and social media presence. We do have a city website. Um, it, it gives you the basics of what you need uh, in city government, but not a whole lot more. Um, we have uh, surrounding communities that share infographics and different things like that uh, on how voting goes and uh, at city council meeting, meetings and other meet, uh, government meetings, uh, and they share those in a, a three second clip or infographic on their social media. I think we can do the same thing. Um, in Ferrisburg, but at the end of the day, it, you know, as many opportunities as we, as we have to share and connect with our residents, the, the better I think we'll all be. I'm down here to 
Oh, I'll just start. Start going the nasty way. I'm not. A, I'm not a hog to the mic. I promise. <laughs> Certainly, I agree with you, William, on the uh, sound system and AV, the audiovisual um, communications with the citizens has, fan, has been a, a good thing. I've been amazed. We started off broadcasting uh, when we broadcasting on YouTube with citizens just with iPhones here for the Ferrysburg Nature Preserve, and I've always been amazed at the amount of interaction that we get um, and still get. And now that the system isn't working, we're going back to that again and, and broadcasting again on uh, Facebook using iPhones. So it works. Um, you stole my thunder about the sound system, though. <laughs> um, <coughs> we're blessed here in Ferrysburg because we've got the lowest property taxes in the Tri-City areas, which is a great thing. But we do have some significant challenges, not only with the bridge, but with, we've got a lot of roads to maintain, we've got a lot of sewer lines, a lot of water lines and everything else. And so it's a matter of, okay, how do we maintain low tax rates? And then occasionally we go before the citizens and the citizens have been able to support city council's decision for a, mo a motor pool assessment. So it's, a, it's got an end date and a start date and same thing for road improvements and we probably are going to have to do that again for streets as well because the cost of doing streets is just astro absolutely astronomical these days and so that's probably my big one issue big concern. well i guess my biggest issue isn't really so much the issues with the city but um just more or less what i would like to see the city become um, I think there's a lot of room for advancement in Perrysburg. Uh, one thing I'd like to see formed is an arts council in Perrysburg. We have a lot of remarkable artists in Perrysburg and a lot of uh, remarkable craftsmen in Perrysburg that um, we should help spotlight their talent. And um, I think there's a lot of enthusiasm for that. I've talked to several people in the community that would really like to share in that and, and, and be involved in that uh, committee. Um, we could have craft shows, uh, uh, music, uh, whatever, you know, um, it, would, it would really benefit the city to create different councils like that. And I, I would just like to make the city better and just uh, move away from all the <coughs> crucial issues that we're always discussing and maybe start looking at a brighter side of the city and not always the crucial issues that, that are happening around us. So and so. All right, well, we made it through all 10 questions, so we will now start with Richard. You'll have a two-minute closing statement if you'd like to give one. Paul, well, it's been a real joy um, serving with everyone that I've been able to serve with through the years on city council. Um, it, um, you certainly don't do this for the pay, and you certainly don't sometimes do it for the love, because sometimes it, uh, elbows can be a little sharp, to say the least. Uh, but it certainly has been enjoyable, and um, I know we all feel um, we all feel uh, grateful uh, for the for the thanks that we get. We all get thanks uh, from citizens all the time, and there's a number of other city council people here as well in attendance. Um, looking forward to uh, maintaining low property taxes and transparent government, and I look forward to your um, look forward to your vote on next Tuesday. Right in. <laughs> is it my turn? Yes, right. okay, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, kind of like Rich said, it, it's been a real honor to serve on City Council. Um, I'm so grateful that you've given me the opportunity to give back to this city. This city is more than just a place to live for me. It's been my home for all my life. It's been my children's home. I attended this school. They, my children attended this school. <laughs> And I've been all over the world in the Army, and I've seen all different types of communities and places. And I tell you, I could never wait to get back to the Great Peninsula of Ferrysburg. It's the most beautiful, most uh, pleasant place that I've found to live. And I just like to thank you for the opportunity to serve you, and I hope that you appreciate my service and um, support me on November 7th. Thank you. Well, so I'll make this brief. Uh, I, I 
have loved being um, a public servant in Ferrysburg over the past four years. I hope to continue being a public servant for the next four years. I, I have not been thrilled about uh, the politics lately, and I'm excited for it all to be over next week uh, so we can all go back to serving uh, and continuing to serve our community. Uh, I appreciate everybody's support through the process uh, of being a council member. Uh, I hope to have everyone's continued support uh, going forward for the next four years. And I'd just like to thank a minute to thank um, you know the, the other two candidates, um, as well as Rebecca for coming um, and sharing their thoughts with you. I wanna thank all of you for coming. Um, it's always, always great to have engaged citizens. Um, uh, it's wonderful to have citizens at our council meetings, especially when you don't have uh, anything to complain about, though we do take <laughs> complaints. Um, and lastly, I just wanna thank Gary and thank the committee. Um, the League of Women Voters usually does this. They were unable to because we're write-ins. And Gary just you know, stepped up and took the reins and organized all this, and I'm sure he had support from his committee, uh, but I appreciate all of it, and I would just love to give him a and his committee a round of applause. And, and then, you know, last but not least, just uh, thank the Tribune for moderating and, and all they do. Um, uh, you know, Kayla's been, I don't know where she went, but she's, she comes to our, our meeting, she shares our news, um, our, the, the good things and the bad, she's here with us at most of our meetings. Um, and thank you, Matt, for stepping in when she's not able to. Thank you for moderating tonight. Um, yeah, everybody get home safe. And I'll say Thank you for that, Will. And um, uh, if the candidates have a few minutes to to personally talk to candidate to the audience before they leave, that would be wonderful. And uh, I'd just like to say thank you for everyone for your uh, rapt attention and for coming out tonight uh, after the crazy snowstorm yesterday. Mm. And um, thank you, Matt, for your moderating, and thank you, candidates, for your uh, uh, intelligent uh, question, qu answers to our questions. And just thank you again for coming out. Thank you, Gary.